Hello, welcome to Telephone Tuesdays. Behind me, we have the This Museum Is Not Obsolete UAX 13 Telephone Exchange. One of, I think I'm right in saying, six telephone exchanges in the museum right now. We have got the German Private Automatic Exchange, we'll hear a bit more about soon. The GEC Private Automatic Exchange that you can call into. The pre-2000 UAX 12 style exchange from around the 1920s. I believe, so a bit older than our light straw coloured UAX 13. These beautiful old big style switches. And you recognise this from a recent video that Sam did. This is another crazy different type of exchange. Very, very interesting the way this one works with wibbly wobbly electromechanical bits. And a bit of an update, we have now tracked down some phones for this, so there'll be some news coming about this very soon. And we've got um, another one here that we haven't actually shown you yet. Shall I give you a little sneak peek? There you go. Whoa! And of course, when you come to the museum, you can play with all these ones. We're slowly making all of them work, so they're all interactive and all connected to each other. Uh, you can see here, we keep um, adding and crossing out and changing the numbers because things are moving around so quickly in the museum, adding new stuff. Uh, we just added back the Bordeaux Cosmo, the um, AI telegraph powered Cosmo face in a clear Mac case. Hello, Cosmo. That Bordeaux Cosmo works off of a really interesting auto answer circuit that I think Sam wants to do a video on. So keep your eyes peeled, subscribe to the channel to catch that. That is going to allow us to actually connect other things to telephones like, I don't know, synthesizers and stuff. Leave some suggestions down in the comments, stuff you think we should hook up to the telephones. So anyway, let's get into the video, shall we? Uh, why? Does all of this stuff actually exist? Who came up with this idea? Like most other things, telephony and uh, inventions and stuff, it's not a simple answer. There was lots of different people coming up with different solutions around about the same time. So it's difficult to credit one person with coming up with the idea of an automatic telephone exchange. Mr. D. Sinclair of Glasgow deserves a mention. He invented an automatic switch for the National Telephone Company. Um, but there was one guy in particular who managed to commercialise the automatic telephone switching and so he is the guy mostly credited with these switches and actually this type of switching to this day is still connected with his name because we call these Strouger switches and his name was Almond Brown Strouger. This is a pretty interesting story and it's pretty amazing to think that this technology dates back so far. So Almond Brown Strouger was born in 1839 in Penfield, New York and he's actually old enough to have fought in the Civil War, yeah. After the war he took a job as a teacher and eventually started work as an undertaker and that is where the story of the automatic telephone exchange starts. Yeah, you heard me right, he was working as an undertaker. So how does an undertaker go <laughs> to creating these mechanical switches? Well, Mr. Strouger was not the only undertaker in his town and it just turned out that the wife of his competitor was working as an operator in the manual telephone exchange. So obviously people would call up the exchange asking for an undertaker and that guy's wife would connect them to him. Sure, so Mr. Strouger was losing out on loads of business. In fact, one of his good friends uh, actually had his funeral directed by his competitor. And at that point, Mr. Strouger got very, very annoyed <laughs> and decided to cut the operators, the manual operators, out of the equation completely. Enough, it's enough. <laughs> so in 1889, I believe with the help of one of his nephews, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, he created the automatic telephone switching system, or at least a very early version of it. It looked very different to what we have here. In fact, actually, the early automatic telephone uh, switching system didn't even incorporate a rotary dial like these old style phones. You had to press a button a number of times to dial a number, and you can actually still do that on these phones. All these dials are doing is interrupting this switch here. There you go. So you can actually do the numbers just by pressing down and releasing the switch. So we should be able to call Mickey Mouse, not using the rotary dial, just doing this switch. And this is a good trick if uh, your parents in the 80s had a lock on the uh, rotary uh, phone so that you couldn't 
uh, call your mates and cost them loads of money during peak hours, um, you could dial them anyway using this little trick here. So 702, is it? The trick is with this, you've got to get it at the right uh, frequency. So like that. And zero is actually 10 pulses. Okay, and then two should take us on the final selector to ring Mickey. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> there you go. A few years after inventing his automatic switching system, he also invented the rotary dial to go with it. The earlier ones looked a bit like knuckle dusters, not exactly like these ones, but they're fascinating mechanical devices in their own right. We'll probably do a video on those as well. So on November 3rd, 1892, the first automatic Strouger exchange was installed in Mr. Strouger's hometown of Laporte, Indiana. So I guess he did put his competitor's wife out of the job. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate, but actually it did take quite a while for automatic exchanges to catch on and start being installed and replacing manual systems. There's an interesting reason why, because at the time, women's labor, who were mostly employed in the exchange as operators, was quite cheap, uh, comparatively to the expensive switching equipment. After World War I though, when women had the opportunity to work in different industries, gain a bit of power in the workplace, the price of female labor actually went up considerably. And the bosses at the telephone exchanges thought, you know what, I think we'll give this automatic switch in a go. Coincidence, eh? But I don't wanna make it seem like women losing their jobs is the theme of this video. Um, actually, uh, manual switchboards uh, were used for a long, long time and uh, as was pointed out in the comments of one of our previous videos about the doll's eye indicators, um, they were actually tactile indicators. You could feel along the row. So there was uh, some of the last operators were actually uh, blind and they kept their jobs all the way up until they retired. So after a pretty successful career in telephony, Almond sold his shares in the automatic electric company for 10000 Dollars. It doesn't sound very much, but that was in 1898. So that is equivalent to $370,687 in 2023. And his patents were actually later sold to Bell Systems for 2.5 million. That was in 1916. So that's like boggling numbers. So 92 million and a bit pounds in 2023. Uh, not bad. According to some sources, Almond then went back to working as an undertaker in Florida. I don't know if it's true. So even to this day, this type of step-by-step -step automatic telephone exchange is referred to as a Strouger exchange. So he's had a pretty long legacy. Of course, the coolest thing about all this stuff is all the noises all of those clicks and clats. And if you want to get your hands on some recordings of those, we've made sample packs so you can use all those sounds, not just the clicks and clacks, but rings and tones that we did another video on for your musical compositions. So if you've downloaded the sample pack and used it, let us know. We want to hear what you've done with it. Even in between takes of shooting this video, I've added two more phones to the phone directory. Um, so things are always changing here at the museum. Even if you've been before, you can come again and we've got loads and loads of new stuff for you to play with. And if you're too far away to visit, but you still want to support us, there's a Patreon link down below where you can not only actually support us, but you can get cool stuff in return, like exclusive videos and downloads. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.